Yes, hello friends. Once again, it's me, Erika Mukisa. I'm here to continue with my testimony. This is the fourth part of my testimony. And I hope you were blessed in the previous testimonies that you've been listening to. See, I have a long testimony. It's an experience of 18 years. Um, even if I made 25 videos, I wouldn't have uh, spoken about half of my experience. But let me flow with the Holy Spirit. As I share this testimony, I want you to know that it's not for material gain. I don't charge people for prayer. I don't charge people for counseling. Just like God did not ask me for money for my deliverance or salvation. Salvation and deliverance is free. And if you've not given your life to Christ, I want to allow you today to think about it and make that best decision you can ever make in your life to come to Christ. Because Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And no man goes to the Father except through him. I want to take this opportunity to thank our, our viewers, to thank people for supporting us, liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. I always go through those comments and I, I am always looking forward to hearing from you because I just want to know, is what I'm talking about making sense? Are people being blessed? Are people, are people happy? Are my friends okay? You see? So just feel free to comment, share subscribe like uh, those of you that have been standing with us financially please thank you so much we wouldn't have been able to release this content without your support and avoid those people who ask you for money in the comment section or people who email you asking you for money uh, posing as if they were me or my husband we do not do that we just allow the holy spirit to speak to people if they want to stand with us they do. If you want to support us, you can check on, on those numbers that are on the screen or in the description box. If not, you can check on our website www.lifeisspiritual.org. Anyone who tries to ask you for money, report that person. Last time I was talking about Saturn and I spoke about the eye of hell, where I went. And I was telling you that hell is built in form of a body. Hell is not just a, a, a lake of fire, like some people think. You see, when you talk about hell, what comes into people's mind is a lake of fire. No, hell is a big body. Just like you see, the kingdom of God, the Bible tells us that we are bodies. We are, we are a body of Christ. Christians, the church is a body of Christ. So we all need each other. The hand needs the other hand. The leg needs the other leg. The eye needs the other eye. We all need each other to be able to function well. Now, in the kingdom of darkness, because Satan copies the things of God, hell was built in a body shape. And I wrote about that in Erica part four death hell and heaven erica served satan for 18 years after her deliverance through the lord jesus christ she traveled throughout uganda ministering and testifying of her experiences in churches schools and at any gathering of people where she could speak one day after ministering in a ugandan village called mitiana they had an accident while riding on a small motorbike after a crusade Erica's wounds were so deep that she died. Erica explains what she saw after she passed. She describes heaven, some of the different levels, and how she entered into that glorious place. She describes the angel of death, his operations, and the inner workings of the kingdom of darkness. Download this book and bring fires of revival back into your life. From lifeisspiritualministries.org God bless you. And today we'll be sharing because you see, I have so much information that if I start describing, I, I may go deep and end up not talking about the other part, but I'm talking about this book and uh, I'm, I'm sharing with you from page 13 and uh, I am now on 14. I talk about the right leg in hell and uh, that 
right leg in hell is not everything in the body, in the spiritual realm, is a dimension. That's why the Bible says the earth is the Lord's footstool. Only one foot can fit on this planet, not both. Only one, the earth is his footstool. Not the leg, but the footstool. Meaning, the earth is a dimension, and it is that dimension of one foot. So now, if in the kingdom of darkness, I hope I'm not, I'm not too much for the, the people who are just coming into spiritual things. You see, life is spiritual. Forgive me if I'm too deep, but I will let you know that uh, when the Bible is talking about these things, it's, it's not just talking about, you know, a foot. God putting the, what does he gain from putting a foot on the earth yet is in heaven? They are talking about a dimension. This earth is that dimension of his foot. So if, if a person thinks that by shaking this earth, they are shaking God, just a foot? How can you shake just one foot? Do you know where the leg is? Do you know where the hand is? Do you know? You know, everything is in his control. So if the earth is just, the, the entire earth is just the size of his foot, just imagine how big this God is. Now, this poor devil, Lucifer, begins to copy the things of God. He begins to, to, <laughs> he begins to also build his kingdom because remember in the beginning, he said, I shall ascend above the stars and I will be worshipped. He has that desire. He wants to go higher than God. He wants to be worshipped. He still wants to be worshipped. So when iniquity was found in, in Lucifer, he was cast out of heaven and he was thrown down into the sea and when he went there he also built up a structure that is somehow similar to the structure of his boss so in hell there is a foot there is a right leg there is a left leg and i'll explain to you where all these things fit so that you understand what i'm talking about you see you see people are, are in a certain movie acting that they, there is in the feast that there is the right the 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 the, the right uh, guys and the left guys the left wing they are acting about the kingdom of darkness these people know what i'm talking about they are deep no one rises without spiritual help and no one goes down without spiritual backup so if your life is down there there was some spiritual backup and if your life is up there was also spiritual back up so be aware life is spiritual now they have the right leg and in the in the right leg i explain that it is where the souls of those that are that have died are kept they are tortured and tormented in this place by demons in ways that are beyond imagination their torment will never end they are burnt, bruised, crushed, beaten, sexually abused, scratched by evil spirits. Those lost souls for, long for, for death, but death has been taken far from them. It is while they are there that they realize that even death sometimes can be a gift. By the way, me, I'm at a point where I don't fear death. If they want to kill, they can kill the flesh. But... It is a means of transport for me from this world into a better place. So now I explain that in that right leg, yeah, you see the people who die after sacrificing people, the people who die in sin, those people who sell their souls to the devil, when they die, they go to that side of hell, the right leg, where they there, and there they are tormented. Remember, they have not yet been thrown into the lake of fire. And the lake of fire is in a place called the heart of hell. That is where that pit is. And that fire is distributed. Just like you see the, the way the heart distributes blood to every part of our body. That torture in that heart of hell is what di distributes the torture to the entire body structure of Lucifer's kingdom. Why they are working so hard to destroy mankind is because they are always reminded of that hell that is in the heart, is in the heart of hell. So on judgment day, hell and everything that is in hell will be thrown inside the lake of fire. That is the heart of hell. 
and that is the second death that the Bible is talking about in the book of Revelation. My husband will come to give you the scriptures. So I want you to understand my brothers and sisters that life is spiritual. Then now I'm going to go to the left leg. I want you to understand the things I'm talking about. It's not just a myth. It's not just a riddle. It's not just a story. This is not a storybook. I am exposing them. I want you to, to get some time and get this book and read. You understand the things that I'm talking about. You see, I felt so bad when I had someone saying that if you want to hide anything from a black person, put it in writing. That is so offensive. Today, I want you to challenge yourself. Get this knowledge and read for yourself. Understand. Now, the left leg. The left leg of hell imprisons the souls who are still physically alive. They are kept in different kinds of prisons depending on how they got there. Some arrived there through witchcraft. They were either personally involved in witchcraft or somebody bewitched them. Like me, my soul ended up in the left in the left leg of hell. That is where I was. Okay? They either personally are involved in witchcraft or somebody bewitched them. Those who are involved in witchcraft were kept in coffins. Their souls, they are not there. Their souls are caged. Those who were bewitched were, were kept in chains of bondage. That's why someone can say there's nothing that I can do in my life and succeed because that person is kept in a chain of bondage. I cannot get married. Every man who comes in my life dies. That is a chain of bondage. And this is what I am explaining. This time I want to share with you. I want you to learn. You know, I, I just felt led to expose this devil as much as possible. I want him to, to, to regret ever touching me and ever touching you. Let us expose him together. With this knowledge, you can also share it so that he gets exposed the more. So, others, their souls are uh, encaged in glass prisons, like my soul was caged in a glass, in a glass prison. If you want to read about my, my, how my soul was caged in a glass prison, you can read Erica part one, Seven Years in Hell. Erica, part one, Seven Years in Hell. An in-depth testimonial of a sorcerer who was initiated into witchcraft at two years of age by her grandmother. These were people who have special privileges in hell due to their positions. Like I was there, but I was now controlling. I was working with telecom companies. I was working with celebrities. You see, these are influential people. You see them shouting. They are saying that they run the world, but they are in cages. That one they will not tell you. They say we are running the world, but we are in cages. It's high time they come out and tell you what, what they are in. If they don't, we are going to tell you what they are involved in. You will know that they are on TV, they are on internet, they are on Instagram, they are on Twitter, they are on YouTube. They are shining, but their souls are in cages. That's why Jesus says that what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? These people who have special privileges in hell due to their servants, uh, these people... These may be world leaders, witches, wizards, warlocks, or, or low-level servants of the devil who may be serving the devil whenever they realize who they are serving. From the foot of hell, one can see the head of hell from a distance. And now that is where I'm going. I hope you're understanding, my friends. I've described the right foot of hell and the left foot of hell. And I have also told you that the earth is God's footstool. Not the leg, not the, not the hand, not the heart. It is just a footstool. And a footstool, I've described to you that it is a dimension. It's not just a foot. 
If you look around, you will not see his foot. But everything you see in this, in this world is a dimension. And in that dimension, that is in the footstool of God. David was spiritual. He was filled with the Holy Spirit and he saw it and he spoke it. He was not just a psalmist. You see, many people uh, listen to music, but they don't know that music is, is not just you know, about someone singing about a topic. For your music to sell for decades, it has to have some spiritual backup. Now, how David got anointed, you all know the story. David was anointed by Samuel. And the Spirit of God rested upon him. And from there we see David in the palace, ministering to the king. So for you to get to that level where you will be in the palace, ministering to the leaders of this world, you must have spiritual backup. It's either from God or from the kingdom of darkness. From God it is eternal. In the kingdom of darkness it's just for a short time. So I want you to, to be observant. Open your eyes, realize that life is spiritual and this world is a theater. People's lives are programmed. It's like a movie. So let us go to the head of hell. I want you to understand. The head of, of hell is an altar that is built in the shape of a serpent with a pyramid with a pyramid in its mouth. The pyramid is inside the mouth of a serpent whose two fangs are above the eye on either side. Just like, I don't even want to mention this, but we shall just show you the photo. Just like a certain temple has been built with a pyramid structure and in a serpentine form with the eyes of the enemy just above. Oh my God, wake up and realize that religion is your way to hell. Religion is a ticket to hell. Jesus did not come to bring religion. Jesus came to bring salvation. Christians, wake up. Now, the pyramid is in the mouth of hell. The throne of Satan is on top of the pyramid, as I explained, it's above. And when you look at a dollar, at a, a dollar bill, one dollar bill, you see a pyramid. And on top of the pyramid is one eye. And that eye is splashing light. And they are trying to tell you that money, money is not just a piece of paper. There is an altar that is built on that money and everyone who is working so hard to make money is working so hard to build the kingdom of darkness. That's why the Bible says that seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So Christians, you have to understand that. The tongue of the serpent which represents deception is what runs the government of the kingdom of darkness. Jesus said, you belong to your father the, 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 the devil, when he speaks lies, that is his language. He knows, he knows. He stretches from beneath the throne of Satan, which is above the pyramid, as I have always been explaining to you, and it goes down below the feet of hell. So that is the red carpet that I was explaining to you in either the second video or the third video. I was explaining to you the, 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 the tongue that goes from below the throne of Satan and it spreads like a red carpet. That is deception. And everyone that is working in the kingdom of darkness is working on deception. Now, the eye of hell. The eye of hell, I have been talking about it and now I'm going to continue. I spoke about it in the previous video. Now, let me continue. In the eye of hell, which is between the two fangs, is another world which is filled with fashion and technology. I, re I, I remember telling you clearly that fashion and technology is not the earrings, it's not the hairstyle, it's, not, it's a lifestyle. They create a lifestyle of homosexuality, of immorality, of, uh, of eating babies, a lifestyle of sin. That is the lifestyle that they are promoting. And, uh, and, and, uh, in, and the, the technology, I've also explained to you that it is 
preparing people for the mark of the beast. So if you've read Erica part 2, 18 years with Lucifer, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. The eye of hell, which is between the two fangs, is another world which is filled with fashion and technology. This is where the fallen angels are. This is where I met Cleo. I think those of you that have been listening, you know the Cleo I'm talking about. That being that lived before the first, uh, before uh, this world was created, that being called Cleo, who works with the telecom companies, and other fallen angels like Abaddon. Abaddon, Apollyon, he's in the book of Revelation 9 from verse 11. You'll be able to see Abaddon. The Bible is talking about Abaddon. And many other fallen angels. Cleo is in charge of technology, of the technology that we see in this world. In the eye of hell, I saw laboratories where body parts of human beings were being mixed with technology in a way that allows humanity to merge with technology. This is the headquarters of artificial intelligence research. It is created here before it is exported into the world as a new and cutting edge technological I innovation. Those other platforms I will not mention, but they are in the book. If you want, you can go to the book. I'm exposing these people. Those flat screens, the computers and, and, and networks where people communicate and those platforms and phones are used to gather information on mankind, on humanity. I'm explaining to you what the eye of hell is about. Cleo is the inventor of all these new technologies, the printing of money, the creation of weapons of mass destruction, and very high-tech vehicles like the beast, which some president of a certain country was using. I think you're understanding. The high-level sorcerers in Hollywood are well aware of whom and what they represent. They may veil the truth and stare, but they serve their father, the devil. And in this book, I even give you the photo of Cleo. Cleo, the photo of Cleo. You'll be able to see it. We shall zoom it. And you'll be able to, you'll be able to understand what we are talking about. That demon is also on a dollar bill. If you fold the dollar bill, you can see the head of that demon. And let us continue. In the eye of hell is where I saw flags and logos of different countries, companies, organizations, which we have here in the physical world. These companies disguise themselves as peacekeepers, food security organizations, health organizations. These companies manufacture everything human beings co consume. It is in the eye of hell that I saw the marine kingdom. Now we are talking about the marine kingdom. I saw Jezebel, the queen of the air, the queen of the sea, the queen of the coast. I saw uh, Fortune 500 companies, international stocks, and many others, media houses, and very well, uh, and uh, that are very well known here in the world. The big banks of the world, major universities, international schools, and hospitals were all there. So now, if you have abandoned teaching your children the ways of God, trusting that when you take them to school, they will have a better future. Let me, let me tell you this. In those universities, there are those professors that are there on a mission to initiate them into the kingdom of darkness. If your child has a brilliant mind, your child will not be spared. That's why you see you take them to school, they are born again. They come back, they don't want to even pray. They don't want to read the Bible. They don't want. Their lives have changed because their destinies have been switched. So parents, wake up. Those of you who are trusting schools that I'm taking my child to this biggest school in the whole world, there is where they are being initiated. Now, let me go to the heart of hell. Now, the heart of hell is where the lake of fire is. The lake of fire is in stages. It has a life of its own and it grows. It produces terrible sounds. It is unending. It is a world of its own. 
there are beings that live in that fire and they grow inside of it and flourish in flames. They are in shapes of caterpillars, maggots and spiders and roaches. They are huge in size. One cockroach can consume two people in a moment of time. I elaborate further about the lake of fire in Erica, part one, seven years in hell. I hope you have read it. And death and hell, the Bible says in Revelation 20, 14 and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death if you've been watching the, the previous video i spoke about it too and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the uh, and, and brimstone where the beasts and the false prophets are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever that is revelation 12 10. now let us go to the right hand I think you're understanding how the hell structure has been built. Christians, intercessors, pastors, wake up. Now, the right hand. In the right hand of hell is where the rulers of this world are located. The rulers of this world, the Freemasons. They are in the Illuminati. They are, those ones, that's, that is where they are located. Those ones that are eating your, the children, the, the ones that are stealing children and eating their hearts and caging them and sacrificing them in the month of October. That is where they are, the right hand of hell, the rulers of this world. This is where the bloodlines of Satan, we shall have a topic a day when we shall talk about the bloodlines of Satan. That is where the people who print the currency and circulate it, money, they rule the financial system of this world. They influence politics and control news. They, in other words, the controllers of this world are in the right hand of hell. They are the synagogue of Satan. They, in, they, they, they include but are not limited. Ha! I will not mention these people. You will just have to get this book and read for yourself. Uh, because I don't want this video to, to be removed. I want people to, to learn whatever they can learn. So let me avoid mentioning the name. But if you want to, to know the people I'm talking about, you can go there and get the book on Amazon or our website. And we explain more about these bloodlines in, the, in this book, The Truth About Money. This is where we expose the people who are, you know, dealing into this the people who are controlling the world the financial system you can get that book also and read we are exposing as much as possible and i hope you're learning something now the left hand let us go to the left hand so that you know how the kingdom of darkness is built the left hand of hell is where you find puppets hey hey you're superstar that is where you find those politicians these small politicians who hold the microphones and uh, deceive the people and cause people to kill themselves. Those ones is where you find them. In the left hand of hell is where you find the puppets who are the leaders, but are actually just slaves of Satan. They are celebrities, politicians, news anchors, comedians, actors, entertainers, false prophets, sports stars, businessmen, and captains of the industry. So I hope you understand, my friend. I hope you understand how this thing is being run, how the government of Satan is. And I wrote this because I knew that they wanted to kill me. And even if they kill me, they cannot kill this. They cannot kill the information. And they cannot kill me before my time because the earth is his footstool. So my God is bigger than the devil. They have tried to kill me, but God has preserved my life. And he has preserved my life to save you. I'm not just doing this to entertain you. There's nothing that I'm gaining from doing this. The only gain I get is when you give your life to Christ. Is when you develop a personal relationship with God. I'm not asking for your money. If you want to support this ministry and you want this information to come out, it's still okay, you can support us. But what is more important is your life, is your soul. Guard your soul, protect your heart. Now, let us go <clears throat> to the belly of hell. The Bible says, out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water. Because we are representing the kingdom of God. Now, you see what is coming from the children of darkness. The belly of hell is where you find demons and evil spirits. Demons are slaves and servants of fallen angels, as I have been explaining. The belly of hell 
is the bottomless pit and a wilderness. Even the demons hate that place because there is no life there. It is a place of emptiness. This is why demons will feed on a person if they get a chance. They have no other source of nourishment. In Matthew 8:29, the demons screamed at Jesus. And behold, they cried out saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of, of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? They know, they know that their time is coming. The devil knows that his time is coming. He'll be thrown into the other lake of fire that is in the heart of hell. Mm -hmm. To torment us, the, the, the torment which the demons dread is, the, is in the belly of hell. Or oh, the right foot where they are sent, they are also tormented for failing their missions. Even demons are tormented by superior demons for failing their duties. The ancient Egyptian pharaohs were replicas and manifestations of the priesthood of hell. The children of Israel became slaves of hell because they turned their backs on heaven. They learned the ways of the Egyptians and forget, they forgot the ways of Yahweh. The result was devastating. The children of Israel became vain. They became witches, wizards, idolaters who without Baking for Elohim, we are, we are as good as dead. Now, I hope you have learned from this. I have explained, I've been describing to you now the body of hell. If you want to get more information, you can get this book, Erica, Part 4, Death, Hell, and Heaven. But I just wanted to share with you those body how the body structure of hell, how hell is built, so that you now know when you're watching a movie uh, and then you see them talking about the right wing and the left wing and they are fighting, just know that it is the celebrities, the politicians who are fighting their bosses, the ones that are printing the money, the bloodline of Satan, the seed of Satan. So now I want you to understand that Satan has children. That's why John the Baptist looked at them and said, you children of serpents. He could look at them and tell because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is the time when the church should be able to discern, to know the children of the kingdom of darkness. You should be able to discern and know the false prophets. You should be able to tell who is to be followed and who is not to be followed. The Bible says that you shall know them by their fruit. Not by their actions, not by the miracles, not by the signs, not by the wonder. When, when Moses dropped down uh, his rod and it turned into a serpent, Pharaoh's magicians were able to also turn their sticks into serpents. The enemy revealed to me all the things and uh, he didn't know that at a certain point God would deliver me. And uh, one of the things I saw when I entered into the eye of hell, I saw, uh, I saw uh, celebrities that had entered into a covenant with Jezebel. And I saw Jeze the, 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 people, the people don't understand when they talk about the Jezebel spirit. They talk about this uh, woman who the Bible describes as evil and uh, you know who tormented and persecuted the servants of God. But now I was seeing the spirit that was behind this woman. Because in the spiritual realm, you're not limited, you're not blind. You can see everything, you can hear everything. Um, and then I was able to see uh, the queen of the coast, the queen of the sea, and, and I was able to see the, the marine kingdom, which is also uh, part of the kingdom of darkness, but it is, it is somehow separated because the marine kingdom influences uh, it deals more with finances and materialistic things. It deals more with uh, sexual perversion and uh, uh, things to do with immorality and, and witchcraft and voodoo. Yeah, so, uh, and uh, it is mostly effective in places where there are businesses in the water bodies. That's where you see 
so much immorality at the beach. There is so much immorality, so much evil, you, uh, so much witchcraft. Here in Kenya, if you go to Mombasa, you will find, you hear of stories of someone taking a, a woman to a lodge and, uh, and this woman disappears. Those uh, hybrid uh, kind of people, you know, a person stretching their hand and turning off the light when they're in the bed, things like that because uh, the marine kingdom is, is centered in such places and it basically controls the finances. That's why people who are attacked by the marine kingdom, like people who dream sleeping with demons, sleeping with men, they are affected financially. It affects their finances because uh, when, when they are dreaming that, Sometimes it comes through witchcraft, it comes through open doors, maybe they were watching pornography, maybe uh, they, they got involved sexually with people that were involved in covenants and by involving themselves with such people, they opened up themselves to attacks and uh, those attacks resulted to them uh, uh, going down financially, you know. Uh, uh, or they are losing their jobs, losing their relationships and things like that. So that is how the marine kingdom is built. Now, when we go again to Saturn, I have not told you who Saturn is. Saturn is your number one enemy. Then no one think is, you know, when you hear people singing that he's a beautiful liar. They are, they, they, are, they are not praising him, they are telling you exactly he is, but because their voices are beautiful and they have been anointed by that, that liar, of course you'll be dancing to the tune, but you don't know. This Satan, the, that Lucifer, in fact, any Christian or any person sh should distance themselves from anything to do with the devil because he came to steal, kill, and to destroy, there is nothing good that can ever come from Lucifer to man. And uh, one time, we had conversations with Lucifer. And uh, I used to meet with him. We went to a satanic Bible school. We had conversations with him. And in the next video, I'll be talking about the conversations that I had with Lucifer. I'll be telling you how I came to realize he is our number one enemy. He is your number one enemy. By interacting with him, there is so much that I found out. And in the next video, I'll be talking about whatever I found out about him. I want you to uh, you just feel free to share these messages because I want so many people to learn. I want uh, people to understand who their enemy is. I want people to escape from the trap of the devil. Feel free to share comment, like, subscribe, feel free uh, to, to tell us what you think about the things that we are posting. If you want to read our books, they are available on Amazon Kindle. Uh, they are available on our website, which is www.lifespiritual.org. In Kenya, you can contact us on the numbers on that screen. You'll be able to get the books delivered to you where, wherever you are. In Uganda, our books are available at Uganda Bookshop, Enjoy Bookshop, and Aristoc bookshops. You'll be able to get yourself a copy and learn because the Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And it will not do me any good to live without leading you to Christ. My husband will come and add the word of God to whatever I've been saying. So before I go, I want to lead you to Christ. Repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you. I accept you into my life. As my personal Lord and Savior, I denounce the devil and everything to do with him. I am a child of God. I distance myself from the, from, from the kingdom of darkness and I embrace Jesus into my life. In Jesus' name, amen. I know that this is the best decision you have ever made. May God bless you. I love you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so happy to be able to bring back more of God's Word and to share with you and to fellowship with you. It's always a pleasure, always an honor to do 
what God has commanded us to do. Let's pray quickly as we, uh, before we continue with what Erica was teaching and just elaborating and showing the scriptures that, uh, that teach what God wants his people to know. Father, we pray that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the economy of heaven flow forth from within my spirit and that only the word of God flow, not the doctrines of men, not the doctrines of ministries, but your word and what you want your people to know so that they may be well equipped and well instructed and skillful in the word of God and in the understanding of the scriptures so that their perspective in life may be accurate. Father, have your way, have your will, have your word go forth in Jesus' name. And I plead the blood of Jesus over every listener, over every family, over every individual, every family listening to this broadcast. I, pr I speak the blood of Jesus over them because I know the anger of the enemy that he does not want this information to be revealed. But Lord, because your word says that which is done in secret shall be brought to the light. Let this word reveal and expose everything that the enemy is doing and reveal your kingdom ruling and reigning in Jesus name. Amen. 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 So in Erica's testimony, she speaks of hell. She, she speaks of the kingdom of darkness. She spoke about how she saw the actual throne of the kingdom of darkness, of, of, of the devil. It's a pyramid. And you'll see very many uh, celebrities posing with that symbol of the, of the pyramid. You'll see them posing, you know, covering one eye. And if you look on the dollar bill, you'll see that pyramid and you'll see the eye. And what is that? That is the throne and the altar of Lucifer. And I want you to remember something that life revolves around altars and covenants. And that's why when God called Abraham, he, the first thing he told Abraham to do when he arrived at the place was to build an altar. Why? Because an altar is what makes it possible for the spirit realm to find expression in the physical realm. In other words, the link between the spirit realm and the physical realm is an altar. Okay? So, even in the kingdom of light, the link between the two realms is an altar. Even in the kingdom of darkness, the link between the two dimensions, the physical world and the spiritual world, is an altar. And any time the spirit realm wants to bring something to pass in the physical realm, we need two things. Well, three really. We need an altar, we need a covenant, and we need a human being who's willing to enter into that covenant. All right? If there's no human being that's willing to do it, it's never going to happen because you need a physical human being who is born of a woman, who is here legally to bring things to pass in the physical world, okay? Um, anything that takes place in the physical world, first of all, takes place in the spiritual world. And now, if that spiritual entity, whatever it is, whether it is the Spirit of God or whether it is a devil, whether it is Satan himself, whoever it is, he has to have an altar. He has to have a place whereby the physical world comes into contact with the spiritual world. So an altar is a portal. It is a, you know, a, a place of transit. It is a place of communication. It is a place where the physical world combines with the spiritual world so that the will of either God or the will of the enemy can come to pass in the physical world. All right. And um, I wanted us to look into that because Everywhere you look, you will find altars. All over the world, you'll find altars. Whether they're in America, whether you are in Africa, if, where, wherever you are, even on that $1 bill, they'll never teach you this, but on that $1 bill where you see a pyramid, that's an altar. And on top of that altar is the throne of Lucifer himself, of Satan himself. And on top of that altar, and on top of that throne, you see that eye, all right? which is the only source of light in that place. And what Erica told us was that from that altar, coming down those, the, the stairs of the pyramid is what is like, what resembles a red carpet or a tongue, okay? A red tongue that comes all the way down the pyramid, all the way to the foot of the pyramid and then forward. And what does that, what does that tongue represent? What is that? Uh, that, that red carpet, what is that tongue? It represents deception. 
all right? Jesus told those children of the devil, he said, you are of your father, the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning. When he speaks a lie, he speaks his own because he's a liar and the father of it. So the God of this world is a deceiver. And the God of this world controls the governments of this world. So the governments of this world are controlled by a deceiver. It does not mean that we refuse the, to obey the law of the land. No. The law of the land provides the apparatus of justice so that justice can be carried out among the people. But oftentimes, if you look at our leaders and you look at politicians, what means do they utilize in order to come into office? They utilize lies. It's, in fact, it's, people joke often about politicians and lies. You know, how can you tell that a politician is lying? His mouth is moving. You know, look, jokes like that. You know, so um, for the kingdom of darkness to find expression physically, there must be an altar. Lucifer sits upon a throne that is on top of an altar, okay? And there must be a covenant upon that altar. So what you see in the scriptures with Abraham, when he came into a covenant with God, God, do you remember the story? The Lord had Abraham build an altar and then Abraham fell asleep. And while Abraham was asleep, behold, a terror of darkness covered him. And then after that, immediately, that was the fear of the Lord entering into him. And then immediately after that, he saw a lamp and the lamp was moving between the pieces of the sacrifice that he had made upon the altar. And what did that lamp moving between the pieces represent? It meant that if God or any one of the two who are entering into this covenant should break or violate this covenant, then they are to be cut in pieces just like those sacrificial animals that have been cut in pieces upon the altar. So this lamp passed through the pieces to represent that. And at that point, God and Abraham came into a covenant, an everlasting covenant, not just for Abraham, but to the seed of Abraham throughout the ages, all right? And now you'll see how we benefit from that exact altar and that covenant that God entered into with Abraham. Because in Galatians chapter 3, verse 29, it says, If ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. So we entered into an agreement that was made with Abraham like 4,000 years ago, might have been around four or 5,000 years ago, that, that covenant was entered into. Now just imagine how strong are altars and covenants if they can be entered into thousands of years before and thousands of years later, they are still in full effect. All right, so that pyramid that Erica was des describing is the very pyramid you'll see on the dollar bill. We'll show you a picture of that pyramid. And then on top, there's an eye, all right? Many celebrities cover their eyes in pictures. I'll show you a few pictures of some celebrities that cover their eye. You'll see Justin Bieber covering his eye. You'll see, uh, you know, Nicki Minaj covering her eye. You'll see all kinds of rappers. You'll see Drake covering his eye and putting the three things. What are they all telling you? That they are affiliated, that they have subjected themselves, that they are in covenant with the God of this world. And the God of this world has done what? In exchange, he's given them money, power, and fame. I want this thing to be repeated until it gets old. Until the next time you see a, a celebrity covering his eye, you're like, oh God, I want another one. Another one bites the dust. You know what I mean? Like another one, you know, gave himself up for the devil in exchange for money, power, and fame. I want this knowledge to get out there until you get tired of seeing it, you know. Um, but we gotta, we're gonna keep on repeating it because Every day there are new artists, every day there are new young people coming in and, you know, seeing what is happening in Hollywood, seeing the, the Grammys, seeing the celebrities and wanting to follow suit, you know, and not knowing that these people sell their soul to Satan in exchange for money, power and fame. And it's the same deal that Satan offered to Jesus. And Jesus said, no. Satan said, if you'll bow down and worship me, I'll give you money, power and fame. I'll make you a celebrity like everybody else, like all the other kings of the earth. And Jesus said, no. But that same deal has been offered to very many other human beings. And those human beings said, yes. And we call them celebrities. I call them traitors. Now, on top of that pyramid, which was incidentally inside of the mouth of a large serpent. So what that, what that, what that structure is, is shaped like 
it is shaped like a building. It is a huge colossal building or is a huge person, okay? It's shaped in the shape of a person with the head of, uh, of a serpent, okay? Now the fangs are coming in from the top and the fangs are coming in from the bottom like that. And inside of the mouth is a pyramid. And on top of that pyramid is that throne where he is seated. And now the tongue comes now over the pyramid. It comes down out of the mouth of this serpent and it goes all the way down. You see like the way the tie, my tie is going down. That, 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 that tongue goes all the way down to the feet of this, of this uh, what is shaped like a man with the head of a serpent, okay? And so that's, that, is this, that is a structure of his building, of his, uh, you see, the same way even the body of Christ is a body, all right? It's a person. And who is the head? Jesus Christ is the head. And the church is the body of Christ. Well, even in the kingdom of darkness, it is a body, but Satan is the head. The serpent head is a, is, is, is a serpent, and the tongue is the tongue of deception. Through deception, he reigns. He rules this world through deception. That's why anybody who refuses to follow the Lord Jesus Christ will live a life of lies. You'll live a life where you are believing lies, where you are subjected to lies. And at the end of it, you'll, you'll regret because you have been deceived the entire time. This is what Jesus was telling us in Matthew 12, 36. He said, he that is not for me is against me. And he that does not gather with me scatters abroad. In other words, Jesus is telling you, I'm the truth. If you don't follow me, you're going to live a life of lies. And everyone you come into contact to, and everyone you deal with will oblige you in one way or another in lies. In this life of lies that you've chosen to live, they will oblige you in one way or another. Every human being you come into contact with on that road of lies will oblige you with more lies, okay? But as soon as you choose to follow the way of truth, as soon as you follow the way of Christ, you will come into contact with others who are in that life of Christ, okay? And that entire lifestyle that you're living is a life of truth, okay? And so the life of lies hates the truth because the life of deception, the word of deception, the way of the world of deception seeks to enslave. That's why those who are not in Christ are slaves. Jesus said, he that commits sin is the slave to sin. So you live a life of slavery if you do not subject, if you do not give your life to Christ and follow him and learn his ways. Because there's many Christians who have just given their life to him and this, you know, they think church attendance is church, is, is Christianity. No, 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 no. You, there are many people who live in countries where churches are not allowed, but they're very saved. And they'll be some of the first ones to enter into heaven. Why? They're willing to give their lives for this thing they believe in. But in their country, Christianity is illegal. Somalia, Christianity is illegal. But there's Christians there giving their lives, being cut to pieces for this Christianity that we enjoy and take for granted. So just imagine, there's no churches there. So church attendance is not the prerequisite for entry into heaven. The prerequisite is that you must be born again and that you must know him and that he must know you. So there must be a one-on-one -on -one relationship. There should be no brokers, no pastor, evangelist, apostle, teacher, or prophet should be your broker between you and God. There's no other broker. There's just the Lord Jesus Christ connecting you to God. That is your connection to God, the Lord Jesus Christ. First Timothy 2.15 says, there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So if you have any other broker, between you and God, you're in an idolatrous situation. You need to repent and get out from that. Come out from among them and be separate. So this place called hell, it is a kingdom, it is a planet, it is a dimension, it is a world of its own. And so it has this area where torment and suffering is taking place. And Erica spoke about the two legs of hell. She, talk about, she spoke about the right leg. She spoke about the left leg and how in the right leg, I believe that is the place of torment. It is a place whereby uh, the souls who are died, who have died in sin, they go to that place. That's what that's the area where they go. They are damned. They are awaiting the lake of fire. Um, there are so many scriptures that talk about this location of hell. It is just a part of hell. It is just the leg. But is but this place called hell is an entire. It, it is a world of its own. Okay, so. Anybody who's been there cannot say that they've seen the whole of it. Why? Just like you live in the earth, but have you seen the whole of the earth? No, you haven't traveled that much. You know, very few of us have traveled to all of the nations of the world, you know. So 
just the same way, is, 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 same situation with hell. Is, you know, but there's people who have been there but only seen a few parts of it. So hell has different portions and different sides. There's the arm of hell, there's the other arm, there's the shoulder, there's, the, there's the, the leg and there's the left leg. So in the right leg, we talk about the hell fire, the place of torment, the prisons of the souls who have been cast out, who have been damned, who rejected the love of Christ. And because your body is writing checks that your soul cannot cash, they end up in that place where they have to pay the debt for their own sin, okay? As long as you live in a life of sin, you have to pay your own debt. You're saying, by rejecting Christ, you're saying, no, I don't want you to pay my debt, I'll pay my own debt. And if you'll pay your own debt, that means that you belong to the God of this world. And what is the God of this world going to do with you if he gets his hands on you? He's going to cast you into the prisons to be tormented by his demons. He'll never give you a kingdom. There are, there are masons who think that Satan or Lucifer is going to give them a kingdom, that he's going to turn this world into uh, a utopia of sorts, you know, a paradise. That's lies. He's not going to give you a kingdom. He's going to cast you into the, into the prisons of hell to be tormented by his demons that are innumerable. There are so many of them. Now, there are so many scriptures about hell. I'm going to go through a few of them. But you'll realize that the New Testament talks about hell more than it talks about heaven. And that's why we are talking about hell a little bit more than we're talking about heaven. Because if you're not informed on these things, nine times out of ten, you're going to end up in that place. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather, fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. That's Jesus talking about hell. Jesus himself spoke about hell more than he spoke about heaven. That's why we expose that place. And we want you to see the systems of that place still finding expression in the physical world that we live in. And that's why we point out the celebrities. That's why we're going to be doing an expose on the Grammys. And we're going to show you how these artists are representing spirits, they are representing hell, they are representing a kingdom. And we'll show you how everything they do, do represents that kingdom. All right, so, and that kingdom is called hell. And if you don't live your life for Christ, you will represent that kingdom by default because the God of this world will have his way with you. And if you are not aware of how he operates, he'll rule you easily. Matthew chapter 25, verse 46, Jesus says, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into everlasting life. So again, the Lord Jesus speaking of hell. Psalms chapter 9 verse 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. This is a law. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all of the nations that forget God, all of the nations that turn their back against God. I told you the governments of this world, the word government is made up of two words. One, govern. Two, ment, from which we get the word mental. In other words, govern means to control. And ment, being the short version of mental, means to control of mind. It is mind control. Wherever you look at government, if you look inside their, their, um, their intelligence branches, you will see mind control heavily being emphasized. Look into, CIA, look into the CIA and study and do a bit of research about MK Ultra mind control and find out why CIA is so heavily invested in journalism. We found out that government in the U.S. is just like an extension. Media is just an extension of government. Uh, Hollywood is just an extension of government. Why is the government so heavily invested in Hollywood? Why is NASA so heavily invested in Hollywood? Why is Hollywood, is supposedly an entertainment unit, so heavily tied in with government? Why, why, do they, why are they so invested in giving you a perception or trying to control the way you think? All right, why are they so invested in pulling you away from the scriptures? Why is Hollywood, because just think about this for a minute. The way Christian and Christianity is, um, you know, spoken of negatively by Hollywood. Hollywood is attacking Christianity every chance they get. And, I, and we'll need to do a, a video about that. But Hollywood is always attacking Christianity. So if it is true that the Muslims are the ones who, who uh, carried out 9-11 and destroyed the Twin Towers, 
and also Building 7, even though no plane flew into Building 7. But if the Muslims did that, then don't you think Hollywood should be attacking the Muslims? Why do they attack Christianity? You know, so you have to ask them, which one is it? And if you, if you, you know, just run some more investigations, you'll find that there are a lot of, you know, um, inequities and a lot of anomalies, a lot of things that just don't make sense in what they're doing. But overall, you, 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 you realize that Hollywood is just an extension of government. All right. Um, they utilize the government. They utilize Hollywood to create scenarios. They want you to think in a certain way. For instance, they've poured a lot of money into immorality. Why are the most immoral people such huge stars? Why is the apparatus of media being used to promote the most immoral, the most decadent, the most more, those who are void of moral, of any kind of moral standing at all. Why is the machine being used to promote them as much as possible? Why are billions of dollars being poured into their budgets? Why are they doing that? Because they want to pull you away from godlessness. All right? Because it is only through God that you can come out from slavery. And Satan wants, Satan rules through slavery, through deception. He imposes slavery on the masses of people. That's why Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. What does labor and heavy laden imply? Slavery. So Jesus is trying to pull you from slavery the same way he pulled the children of Israel out of Egypt with a mighty hand. What did he bring them from? From slavery. And if you look at the pyramid on the $1 bill, where are the pyramids? In Egypt. And who was king in Egypt? Pharaoh. And where were the children of Israel slaves? In Egypt. So the same old system, the nothing much has changed under the sun, the same old system, the financial system of slavery is what is at work even today. And that financial system of slavery is designed to pull humanity into hell, which is our topic of discussion. Psalms 917, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Second Thessalonians chapter one, verse nine, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Uh, Matthew 15 or 13 verse 50, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. So that's Jesus speaking again concerning the, the furnace of fire, concerning hell. Acts chapter two, verse 27, because you will not leave my soul in hell, neither will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. This was actually them referring to what the psalmist wrote about uh, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, what he would do, how he would die and go to hell and take and carry the sins of the entire world in with him into a place called hell. And he left the sins of the entire world in that place. And he rose again from the dead. So if you look at what he did, and you look at how it was prophesied about in the book of Psalms. It says, because thou will not leave my soul in hell. This, they were prophesying. David was prophesying about the coming of the Lord Jesus and how he would give his life as a ransom for many. He says, you will not leave my soul in hell. In other words, the soul of the Lord Jesus Christ would not be left in hell. Because God judged that situation and said he was murdered for nothing. But he took upon himself the sins of the whole world. And so hell became the abode of sin. That's why that place is not for human beings. That place was not made for you and me. That place was created for the devil and his angels. Mark chapter 9 verse 43. And if your hand offend you, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. All right, that place is real. That place is there. When you come out of that body, you'll realize, when you come out of this physical body, this physical body is just a shell. We all know it's temporary. And you will leave that body one day. And when you leave it, you will remain with the God you served during the days of your life. Jude chapter 1 verse 7, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So there is a place where fire is eternal. There is a place where fire is alive. 
the fire itself is alive. We think that fire, in this world, fire doesn't seem to be alive. It doesn't seem to be a living thing. But in that place, fire is alive. You'll, fi you'll realize that fire lives. It has a mind of its own and speaks and seeks to burn more. Proverbs 15, verse 24, the way of life is above to the wise that he might depart from hell beneath. Look at how many times the Bible mentions hell. Proverbs 23, 14, you shall beat him with the rod and shall deliver his soul from hell. This speaks about parents disciplining their children to beat them with a rod and deliver their soul from hell. Again, hell is mentioned. Matthew chapter 13, verse 42, and cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. That is a place of suffering, a place of torment. It is a place where the demons have their way with you completely. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41, there, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So the Lord Jesus is in that scenario. He's talking about how he separated the sheep from the goats. And the sheep, he said, those were the ones that cared for him. Those were the ones that cared for the poor. Those were the ones that gave him food, clothing, shelter, and they cared for him of their physical substance. I was naked, you gave me clothing. I was hungry, you gave me food. I was in a situation and you took care of me with your money. And they'll, the righteous will ask, when did we do this for you? We never saw you. And, and the Lord Jesus will say, when you did it for that homeless person on the street, when you did it for that person who had nothing, that person who was helpless, that's when you did it to me. And then he'll turn to the goats on the other side and he'll tell them, goats, I was naked, you did not clothe me. I was hungry, you did not feed me. I was in a situation, you would not deliver me. And they'll say, when did we see you? And he'll tell them, the time you didn't do it for them is the time you didn't do it for me. And then he says, depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So that place was not prepared for human beings it was prepared for the devil and his angels revelation 19 verse 20 and the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast i remember that tongue that flows from from the pyramid and comes down to the feet the protocol of deception and them that worshipped his image, those both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. The Bible says that hell itself, which is a world of itself, hell itself shall be cast into the lake of fire. All of hell, which was prepared for the devil and his angels, that place shall also be taken and cast into the lake of fire. Proverbs 15, 11. Hell and destruction are before the Lord. How much more than the hearts of the children of men? So he's telling you that place called hell, the Lord can see it. That place is before the Lord. How much more the hearts of the children of men. So the Lord gauges the hearts of men. And the way he can tell whether it is good or evil is what you choose to do with your substance. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So that place called hell is real people leave their bodies and they go there all the time i was just doing a study the other day and we realized that every year 54 million people die 54 million people die every year i'm talking about in 2018 54 million people 2019 another 54 million people 2020 2020 probably even more than 54 million because of covid 19. now of that 54 million, maybe about four, three or four million might make heaven. Of 54 million people. That's why Jesus was telling you, wide is the gate that leads to destruction. But narrow is the path that leads to life and few there be that find it. That's why I want you to have a personal relationship, not with some televangelist, not with some famous preacher, not even with me and Erica. No, no, no. I want you to have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ yourself. You personally know your Bible for yourself. If you don't have time for your Bible, you don't have time for God. You're joking with life. Once you come out of that body, you'll realize all this stuff we're preaching was not nonsense. Once you come out of that body is when you realize when you used to sleep and you would have dreams, you would catch a glimpse of that eternal world. So you need to understand that these things are real. Once you would wake up, you would realize, hey, 
the things that you're seeing in those dreams, they have a physical impact on your physical life. And that God is oftentimes trying to reveal your spiritual state through dreams. Some of you are, having, are being chased in dreams. Others, use, others are having sex in dreams. Others are in dreams, you're being, you're, you're being fed with food. You're not supposed to be eating in dreams. You're not supposed to be having sex in dreams. Others are having dreams where wild animals, where lions are hunting you down. Others are having dreams where you're in meetings with people or you're in orgies or you're in strange places where people are partying and doing things like that. And the Lord is showing you the spiritual state that you are in is dangerous. You have to get close with the Lord. Now it is possible to come into a covenant even in your dreams, but that is not even the subject of our discussion right now. But Abraham came into a covenant with God. And when did it take place? While Abraham was asleep. So if that can happen on the good side, that can also happen on the evil side. So if righteousness can establish a covenant, even while the person is sleeping, so can wickedness. That's why many of you are having sex in dreams and sex is a covenant. And once that covenant is made, they will put misfortune in your life. You'll suffer from poverty, various sicknesses, diseases, divorce or strife in the marriage, which leads to divorce, all manner of misfortune is brought to pass through covenants. I told you, the enemy needs an altar and a covenant to bring evil to pass in the earth. The same, same way God needs an altar and a covenant to bring the fulfillment of his promises. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So if you're not having abundant life and yet you're born again, look closely at the dreams, look closely at what God promises and then deal with those altars and those covenants that are fighting against your life. Otherwise, altars and covenants control people's lives. All right. We're out of time. I love you. God bless you. Let me pray for you. And let's wrap this up. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every soul under the sound of my voice. I pray, Father, that they may realize that life is spiritual. They may understand the technology of the Spirit, the application of the principles, the ordinances, and the protocols of the Spirit. That they may understand how to destroy the covenants and the altars that are controlling their lives. To bind the familiar spirits that are imposing the covenants that they entered into on those altars. How to deal with generational and, and ancestral curses that have been cursing them and bringing misfortune upon them where they were, whether they were saved or not. Father, I pray for them that you may deliver them right now. Heavenly Father, I come against those altars and those covenants that are destroying their lives, that have been frustrating their finances and frustrating their health and their and their 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 relationships making it impossible for them to even get married father i come against those foul spirits and i break those covenants and i send fire upon those altars to destroy those altars that have been fighting against your people frustrating their efforts every time they're going to get a deal and the deal never goes through every time they're prepared and every time they've they've done everything that needs to be done but the deal never goes through the job always goes to somebody else something always frustrates something always comes through to frustrate their progress. I come against those altars. I destroy those covenants. I bind those familiar spirits. I render their lives off limit. Father, set a hedge of protection round about them on every side. Father, show them how to fight. Otherwise, there'll be casualties of war. Master, I pray that you bless them. I pray that you preserve them. I pray that you teach them how to have personal relationships with you. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name, we pray. Amen. We love you. God bless you. Be safe out there. Witchcraft and Spiritual Warfare The awesome third part of the Erica Testimonial Series In this edition, Erica exposes witchcraft and reveals how it can be defeated and overcome in the name of Jesus. Everything you are going through now has an origin and that origin can be dealt with but you must know how. Find out in Erica Part 3 Witchcraft and Spiritual Warfare and overcome every obstacle in Jesus' name.